continuing build-up at Cameron Bay promises to make this port one of the largest and busiest in the world. Port construction at the bay did not actually begin until June of 1965, three months after a coastal survey determined its potential as a major harbor. Soon after, men of the 35th Engineering Group, which began initial construction, were joined by ordnance, headquarters, quartermaster, and transportation units. By November of last year, the quartermaster depot was activated and began accepting requisitions from Quignon, Natrong, and Saigon. Today, a data processing facility is nearing completion, which will enable much more efficient inventory control. Another important project currently underway by the 87th engineers is the building of a new causeway to the ammunition dump. In anticipation of the build-up yet to come, more construction equipment has been concentrated at Cameron Bay than there has ever been anywhere else in Southeast Asia. During August, Military civic action programs were in full swing throughout Vietnam. Several activities took place in the province of Phu Yen. A medical team arrives at Tuy Hoa, a village 360 kilometers northeast of Saigon. Patients are treated and supplied with medicine. Instructions for its use are usually given in sign language. When necessary, Injections help underfed youngsters fight off native ills. Bad teeth are a recurrent problem. Many must be pulled. Toothbrushes, disinfectants, medical literature and clothing are handed out. This is all part of our program of teaching personal hygiene. The team stays in the village until the last patient has been treated. Only then do they return to base. Not far away are the headquarters of the 1st Brigade, 101st Division. On 27 August, fire breaks out in a village across from the base. A bucket squad is quickly organized by the military police and additional firefighting equipment is supplied by an engineering company. Water arrives in tank cars, and soon the villagers, helped by the American soldiers, have the fire under control. Twenty-four huts are burned to the ground, and twenty-eight families lose everything they own except the clothes on their backs. Still, no lives are lost, and thanks to quick action by the MPs and engineers, most of the village is saved. No chances are taken on the fire breaking out again. The wreckage is cleared away, and every ember is thoroughly drenched with water. As the last spark goes out, our men go back to their camp, and the villagers begin to rebuild. Only a few kilometers away is the hamlet of Hua Hisip. Here, a school formerly used as a headquarters by VC terrorists is repaired. On the roof, Volunteers from the 101st Airborne help the workers and protect them against possible sniper fire. These holes have been made by grenades, while small arms fire has caused most of the damage to the walls and the windows. As the children watch, the work continues. Roof tiles are put into place. Outside, our men stand guard while inside, desks are repaired and the classroom is put back in order. Helping whenever they can, members of the 101st Airborne Division are doing their share in the Civic Action Program. Efforts by the 300-man headquarters 
Australian force to aid the Vietnamese people are gaining support. The unit recently began to help a small orphanage in Saigon, and when word of their activities reached Australia, companies and individuals generously began to send needed supplies of food and clothing. On September 3rd, members of the unit arrive at the orphanage to deliver the latest shipment, cartons of baby food and sugar. The orphaned children range from only a few days old to three years of age. Many formerly suffered from malnutrition and body sores, but now Australian medical officer Captain John Raftery and a Vietnamese doctor have begun regular medical visits. In addition to their direct benefits, civic action programs such as this are playing an increasingly important role in combating Viet Cong propaganda. Forty-five generals gathered in Seoul on August 13th for the commanding general's fourth invitational shooting match. The five-event program between general officers and colonels of the Republic of Korea and U.S. armies was held at the picturesque Korean Military Academy range, bordered by pine-studded slopes. Team positions on the morning-long card are decided by lot. Host for the match was General Dwight E. Beach, commander of the 8th U.S. Army. At last year's meet, the 1st ROK Army walked off with a top prize in the star-studded field, which has been dominated annually by Koreans and their firearms. Teams take their places at the firing line for the three rifle events, the carbine, M1, and M14. The last two events were shot with 38 and 45 caliber pistols at a distance of 25 yards. It was their accuracy with these sidearms that brought the 2nd ROK Army to the forefront, beating out General Beach's 8th Army Headquarters team, 345 to 335. After tabulation of the scores and a break for lunch, General Beach presented the individual awards. And to Lieutenant General Kyung Won Pak, Commanding General and Captain of the 2nd ROK Army, the team plaque for the winning entry. At Lake Kimpsey, Germany, a skydiving team from the 3rd Support Brigade, known as the Sky Eagles, is about to give a water landing jump exhibition. Before boarding their H-34 helicopter, members of the jump team are checked out by 1st Sergeant William Ritchie, Headquarters Company, 35th Supply Service. This is how the lake resort, located 40 miles south of Munich, looks on a clear September day. The Sky Eagles will soon be joining the sailing craft in the lake. First man out is Sergeant Ritchie. Parachuting into water is not easy because it is unusually difficult to judge the distance and speed at which the jumper is falling. He is followed by First Lieutenant George Sovell of the 793rd MP Battalion, who free falls for an interminable time before pulling the ripcord. But the Sky Eagles know their job. Without exception, they land on target. Wet, but happy with their success.
Warendorf, Germany, 6 September. A U.S. team from Fort Sam Houston, Texas, is representing the armed forces of the United States in the annual Conseil International du Sport Militaire, CISM, Modern Pentathlon Championships. This year's meet is being hosted by West Germany. Crack military teams from 10 European countries and the United States are competing in the five event championships, which include horseback riding, fencing, pistol shooting, swimming, and a 4,000-meter cross-country run. Each competitor must complete all five events before he can qualify for individual and team standings. The 5,000-meter steeplechase course has 30 jumps. Taking the hurdles is specialist William Matheson of the U.S. team. Despite a clean ride, an 11-second penalty relegates him to 16th place in this event. Interest in the SISM meet has been high since modern pentathlon made its official debut during the 1912 Olympics. At that time, General George S. Patton, then lieutenant, finished fifth overall in the individual standings. Fencing is conducted under international rules using electrical contact controls. Each man must first compete against each member of his own team before being matched against members of other teams. In this event, Specialist Matheson leads the U.S. contingent as he placed eighth among the 26 competitors. For the pistol shoot, Lieutenant Donald Walheim, an alternate, blackens his sights and discusses strategy with a team manager, Lieutenant Colonel Emmett C. Townsend. In this event, on the 25-meter pistol range, Specialist Matheson comes through again to take third place in the scoring. Swimming events occupy the fourth day of the competition. In the 300-meter swim, Lieutenant James Coots cuts through the water to a fast-paced win for the U.S. team. Lieutenant Coots proudly takes his place of honor on the winner's stand. The final event of the meet, the 4,000-meter cross-country run, gets underway for the U.S. with Lieutenant Coots. Running against the clock, Specialist Larson, number eight, gets his tap off and starts down the long trail. Specialist Matheson is the third and last member of the team to leave. The course is laid out over rugged and varied terrain. Specialist Larson, with a time of 1240.7, takes first place. On the winner's stand, Specialist Larson proudly accepts his prize on behalf of the U.S. team, then stands at attention as the American flag is raised, signifying a first-place victory in the event. At formal ceremonies held in the streets of Werendorf, the U.S. team is awarded second place behind Italy in the overall competition. At two-week intervals throughout the year, the Advanced Individual Training Brigade, AIT, Fort Dix, New Jersey, holds an orientation on the weapons of the infantry. Designed to give new recruits an introduction to the weapons and their capabilities, the demonstrations are popular with the public, who turn out in large numbers to see the show. Among the weapons demonstrated is the caliber 45 pistol. The M14A2, equipped with an automatic capability, bipod legs, two hand grips, and a flash compensator. This weapon replaces the BAR. The M16 rifle is gaining popularity among troops in Vietnam. 
It permits the launching of grenades without supplementary attachments. The M79 grenade launcher firing a 40 millimeter projectile is known as the infantryman's hip pocket artillery. The M79 is designed to furnish the squad with grenade protection between the maximum distance a man can throw a grenade and the minimum ranges a mortar can be fired. The M60 machine gun has a cyclic rate of fire of 550 rounds per minute and with its quick change barrel offers a great advantage over the old caliber 30 machine gun. The M60 can be handheld, mounted on a bipod, or tripod. The 50 caliber machine gun has a semi as well as full automatic capability. When equipped with a telescopic sight, it may be used as a sniper weapon. The 90 millimeter recoilless rifle replaces the 3.5 rocket launcher as an anti-tank weapon. Upon impact, the round burns its way through the tank hull and the molten metal then ricochets, killing the crew. It can be fired from the monopod or from the shoulder. The 106 millimeter recoilless rifle is the company's long range anti-tank weapon. The 81 millimeter mortar is a widely used weapon and is normally placed in support of the rifle company. For spectators and recruits alike, a good show.